before we get started, this is not, this is a brand new brush set that I'm not used to, so this painting is not very good. So just bear with me. I should also say that this is a very, very good brush set, that great for beginners, oils and acrylics, and I would have loved to have had it when I was teaching myself to paint. So, thank you, just bear with me, okay? Thank you. And let's get started. Hello and welcome back. Today is going to be another review, product review video and this time it's for um, this Royal and Lang Nickel Natural Bristle Brush Set. This is for oils and acrylics which is why I bought it. This comes with 10 brushes. The majority of them are flats, a couple are filberts and one is a number 4 fan brush. It also comes with a few round brushes. I'll show a picture of them in a video. Just to get a basic idea, they look like this. I had to trim the bristles a little bit on the fan brush. It actually made it look better. See, now it looks more like a good fan brush. Anyway, I'm going to be painting with those in this video, along with just my typical Bob Ross 1-inch brush. And maybe a different brush if I feel like it. So let me just... Oops, sorry. Here's the camera. Fortunately, you won't be seeing my handsome face today. Yeah, I know, what a bummer. And you won't be seeing my palette view today. I've only got the one camera, so I'm, I apologize for that. Now, I just covered the whole canvas with a very thin coat of liquid white. And additionally, I'm also going to run the colors I'm using across the screen that I'm using for this painting, obviously. <laughs> well, I'm just going to get started by grabbing the biggest flat brush there is and going into some Prussian blue. Let's see if I can dig it in there. Yep. Load it even. Now it says oil and acrylic oils and acrylics, but once you use it for one, you shouldn't use it for the other. Like now that I've started using this for oils, I really wouldn't recommend using this for acrylics now because it's been with oils. Prussian blue is a nice, cool color to use for winter scenes. I'm going to tap in a little more to darken it here at the top. I want this to be a nice cold sky. I'm just tapping it in more. Now I'm just going to Put some water here at the bottom. Start at the bottom, move to the top, pull in and go outward. Use these horizontal strokes. If you go from inside out, it'll make your water look really weird. There we go. Try to get these as horizontal as I can. I haven't finished my canvas panel clamp yet, so you can clearly tell. So now I'm going to wash my big flat brush with odorless paint thinner because I'm working with oils. can beat the devil out of it. Well, out of these flat brushes, you can beat the devil out of them on a brush beater rack. I wouldn't do it against the leg of your easel. Would be completely safe. You can just, you know, dry it off on a paper towel. So I'm going to take my one-inch brush and just blend them all together. Blend the whole lake together. And already I have a decent-looking lake. And look, you can move this paint around. Look, see how I'm moving it. Yeah, this is a cold sky. This is going to be a nice little winter scene. Also, I'm going to blend my sky out. This liquid white lets me blend color right on the canvas. Alright. And because this thing came with filbert brushes, this would also mean I can make some pretty decent clouds with it too. This one I just find one. Here, I'll use a little one. Go right into some titanium white. And just tap it in. Or, here we go. 
just roll them in. Just making circular strokes. It's okay if it's dirty. It's a cold sky. Ooh. Whoops. Sorry about that. The thing literally fell off and... Well, you saw. <laughs> so I'm gonna reach for a now clean on his brush and just sort of tickle these clouds a little bit to soften them. I haven't even blender brush to soften these clouds but I'm going to show you how to how cool that is in another video. Try not to touch the top of these yet. I'm going to beat the devil out of that. Just sort of Fluff them a little with little circular strokes. Now I'm going to lightly sort of blend those clouds out. Yeah. And those look good enough for me. So now I'm going to take some black, some Prussian blue, and just sort of mix them together on the brush because I'm going to make a mountain now. How about here, right here, right here, maybe, yeah, why not, one right there. Yep, that's right, I'm going to make them with a brush instead of with a knife this time. get rid of all the excess paint. Sort of blend it out. I'm going to wash that brush again. I kind of like these brushes. I might buy a set for acrylics, but I mainly got this from my oils. tap some highlights onto that so I'm gonna grab just a little bit of liquid white and tap it into my flat brush so now I'm gonna lightly lightly now tap some snow onto these mountains and it should get darker as it gets down here to the bottom shouldn't take much pressure at all really just like with the knife no pressure I'm going to join them together right here and tap in the same way and just give this little guy some highlight I'm going to take just a little bit of Prussian blue and mix it in with that white color and make a shadow color. Doesn't seem much darker, does it? Yeah, it's okay. Now you could start this over if you wanted to. Literally wash it with paint thinner. Change your mind, like, I'm going to darken it right here. Tapping lightly. I'm going to wash my brush again. Now I'm going to tap 
the base of these mountains out. Lightly though. And then I'm going to feather it up a little with my one inch brush. Follow the angles. There we go, we got some misty mountains. I'm going to take my filbert brush and wash it because I still had some white on it. One's a little small to beat on the brush beater rack, but it's alright. I'm going to take some Prussian blue and just a little bit of white. Not much. I'm just sort of tap it in. I'm going to make some foothills. Just tapping. I think that's good enough for him. Just gonna pull up a little. And now I'm gonna tap this out. And so Blend them together. Actually, I'm going to turn those into reflections. I'm going to take my one inch brush. Just. There we go. I'm going to put a little bit of snow on it, too. Just so. There we go. Separate the top from the reflections. Don't worry about the side. He don't look good right now, but I'm about to add another foothill in. That'll cover him up. So now I'm tapping into a mixture of black and Prussian blue. I'm just going to do the same thing. It's closer, so I did them a little further down. Got a hair there. It's all right. Just sort of do this with your brush, and it'll come right off. So now I'm gonna tap the base of him out. And just sort of pull the bottom out, like the other one. Pull to the side. It's all right if my light looks a little weird here. So now I'm going to take my flat brush, the same one, you can switch it different one. This thing comes with multiple flat brushes. I'm going to put a little snow here too. Almost look like they're joined together, don't they? It's okay. I think it looks kind of cool. Anyway, that's just the foreground anyway. I'm going to pull up a little bit. Make it look like trees in the distance. This may not show up on the camera, but that's okay. Take just to speed this process up. Hmm. I'm gonna take my flat brush and no. Well, I'm gonna take the giant filbert brush instead. How about it? And let's fill in. No, nope, can't make up my mind. I'm just gonna take my one inch brush, Prussian blue, and just sort of. Oh, whoo! Looky catch there. All 
right? I'm actually going to hold it down while I tap it to make sure this firm pressure doesn't knock anything off. Tapping this in. Alright. Now I got my pallet back. Whoops. Now that I got my pallet back, let's see, I'm going to take a monster sized flat brush. And I'm just going to. Oh wait. Let's try this giant filbert. I'm gonna take some tight liquid white, and go right into the titanium white and pull it in one direction. But full of paint. Now I'm gonna No, nope, not thin enough. That's okay. I mean, it's not okay, it's not thin enough, but it just means you can go back and add more. Remember, a thin paint will stick to a thick paint. That was Bob's golden rule. If I remember anything he said, I definitely remember that. Oops. Got hair. <laughs> yep. Bush tree that lives right there. bush tree that lives there. Well, the brush doesn't seem to be working for that, but it look, works good for tapping down trees, and I'll probably do that in another video. Sorry, I keep hitting the camera. I have a close-up view so the picture looks better. I'm going to do the same thing on my one inch brush because this usually works for me. And that's what's important. Do what works for you. Don't do what works for me. I'm, I'm doing what work, works for me. There we go. Get all these snow covered bushes and trees. I like these little snow covered ones. I think they look kind of pretty. Just rolling through it. Now that's what it should look like right there. I loaded it right that time. Pulling straight down. I think I'm ready to make some snow. You want to see how to do that? Easy peasy. Let's make some hills or a snowy little hill right here. Exactly white, white enough for me. So I'm gonna. There we go. And you can make one hill come in front of the other, just brush strokes. Yeah. We'll take, try out this new little number four fan brush. Go into some. Midnight black, Prussian blue. Let's grab us to whew, drop paint there. It was a little much. Let's just make some happy little trees.
evergreen trees kind of getting into the right area there. I guess I should have put the tree in first. This cold place, I think that guy should have a friend, don't you? Just using the corner. Using a lot of black. You can tell I'm using more of the fan brushes that come down. I'm going to add some highlights to these trees. So without cleaning my brush, I'm just going to go into a little liquid white, titanium white. It's sort of a nice little bright color. This thing didn't come with a script liner brush. It did come with some round brushes, though. Anyway, one thing it needs to be taken care of is putting my snow back in. Yep. Let me take... regular palette knife and scrape through some of this do it more than the dark areas though that's when it'll work best for you hmm I'd say I reckon that's ready for a signature it's not one of my best but I've shown you how to do it, now you can do it better than me, and that's what's important. So I'm going to take some paint thinner, and I think I'm going to sign it in blue. I typically sign it in red, because that's what I typically sign in. It's a thumb piece of wood. It's going on the paint thinner, and I'm wiggling and turning the bristles to make it thin as ink. Not water, but ink. And I'm just going to sign it. It's thin enough it'll flow right over your the other layers of paint. And reloading after each mark well each letter well I guess that's it for this one certainly have done better but I've definitely seen I definitely remember worst paintings I've done, so thank you very much for watching. Like, share, subscribe button, and happy painting, guys. Bye-bye.